Under a Chanson is over, and we now have the full lineup for the final of Melodie Festival in 2016. There will be 12 acts, but just one winner, so it is time to go around and name our top three. Denise, you've had five weeks to think about it. Who is your number three? It is really hard, but in the end, I think that Franz is my third favorite. If I were sorry, I'd run a thousand miles. Wouldn't stop until I dropped. Wouldn't take the brakes, breathe until I, I got close and all. It's so simple, and I think that's why I like it. In Eurovision, at this time, everything is getting bigger and more special effects and stuff. And then there's Franz, and he's standing there all by himself with... There is a staging, but it isn't that big. And I think that's the quality. The, the song is really good. I mean, he, he's not a great singer, no. But this song doesn't need a great singer, and I think he is... Um, yeah, really charming, and he can he can deliver, and especially because it's that simple. And I don't know, it really grew on me. And he is the favorite now to win, and I think that there is a big chance that he's going to win, and people are going to be surprised. Personally, when I first heard that song, I was completely confused as to why it's been so popular, and as to why people like it so much. Because to my ears, it sounds average enough. But then I thought about it, and it's basically Ed Sheeran kind of mixed with mm. the new Bus Justin Bieber style song. And it is. And I, they're both really popular. So I guess that's why he's proving such a hit. And then I suppose he's a teenage boy, and teenage girls and teenage boys watch Mouthfest and vote for him. I take it he is not your number three. No, Robin. <laughs> First. Ah. <with> Constellation Prize. <laughs> because you. much superior singer with a much superior song in my opinion and he was kind of the surprise package of Mouthfest until Franz arrived because nobody was kind of really expecting him to well definitely not expecting him to get to Andre Johnson it was all about Ace Wilder and Samir and Victor in semi-final one and then he just came and he had such simple staging and it was just him on stage with his harmonica singing his kind of country pop crossover and then those eyes of his like, you could just look at those eyes all day. And, um... I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's a song, though, that has to be listened to live, I think, to really appreciate it. Because it's fine on the... I listen to it on Spotify or whatever. But it's just kind of your average song. But he brings it to life. He has such stage presence and charisma that with even with just the simple thing, he la leaves lasting impressions. So, yeah, he's my tree, number three. Charisma is the perfect transition. My number three oozes charisma. It is Ms. Zaraha. She is bringing Africa to Sweden. Now, in the past, when white people have tried to do Africa, it hasn't worked, but she is authentic. She is real. She is serving this Tanzanian realness, and I feel it. When she beat Isa, I, I wasn't shocked because she had momentum, but I was really proud. She is the slayer of stars. She had to go up against someone with a huge reputation, but Sweden looked past the name and they just wanted to feel something. And Zaraha made you feel something. This was fun, it was summery, it's colorful and energetic. And she's working with a very low budget. I mean, it's basically her in some colorful costumes and then some lights. <laughs> There's nothing going on behind her. Yet because she is so energetic, and she makes you go kizungu zungu. Like, you look past the fact there's nothing there and you just want to go kizungu zungu. Y'all, she has taught us the word kizungu zungu. She is making us dizzy with her music. This deserves to be in the final and I'm so glad it is. They didn't go just past the name of Isa, but also past that amazing song. Sorry, I really can't believe that that's your third favorite. Um, Isa would have been my third favorite if she would have passed. Um, I, I don't like yeah, Sara at all, so I'm not that happy that she won. Sorry. Ah, oh, Kizungu Zungu. No. I have three words. Stella, Mwangi, flopped. Mm. Excuse me, there is a difference. Stella Mwangi 
couldn't sing. <laughs> Zaraha can sing. She can dance. She can move. She can work her angles. She can find the camera. She can like be the center of attention even when surrounded by dancers. Stella Mwangi, she ain't got that. You can dance. You can sing. I prefer you on stage. <laughs> Well, if they gave me a song like Kizungu Zungu, I would be there. Moving on, number two, Denise. My number two is Oscar Sia. I think that in two years, um, he grew so much. Talking about his voice and also about music. I mean, I really like his uh, pop song from two years ago, but this one is much more serious. And he's, it's a song about his life. I mean, you can see it and you can feel it when he's singing. He's, every word he's saying, I believe him. And I think the staging is really good. It is simple, but with the cameras, it looks awesome. I really like the clouds and I, yeah, I don't know. In the beginning, I, I also liked it, but now after seeing it more times and taking a better look at it, I, it's really grew on me and now it's my second favorite. Well, of the two teeny bopper kind of style pop stars, um, Oscar and Isa, Oscars come out better. They're both got very dark, brooding balance. But Oscar puts that bit more emotion, that bit more passion into it. And he's more involved, whereas Isa is kind of like a stage school recital. But the only problem is Oscar gets so passionate that sometimes he sings out of tune. All right. My number two is Don't Worry by Ace Wilder. Don't worry, it's all right. Don't worry, it's all right. I think it's, hmm, I'm not sure what to think. When I first heard it, I was disappointed that it didn't live up to Busy Doing Nothing. But the thing is, I liked Don't Worry from the start. I didn't like Busy Doing Nothing until the summer of 2014, which was well after Mouthfest ended. And it's kind of following the same format as all her songs, that it's really relatable lyrics, where she's singing about all the stuff that happens to us in day-to-day -day lives. Fair enough, most of us probably haven't kissed our boss, but the rest of it <laughs> related. Or shown up drunk in church. <laughs> well... <laughs> the staging is worthy of a winning entry for Eurovision. Just the huge giant cubes, then the replicas of A's, then the way she kind of does a kind of almost Paula selling like where she appears, where you think she's over there, but that was just a hologram. And that staging and her choreography, like she's upped her staging so much since 2014. and. I think the song is definitely not that far behind Busy Doing Nothing and I think it's just we held it to such high expectations that people are kind of going down on it now. Yeah, that song isn't in my top three but it's certainly grown on me. I listened to it ahead of this video and I really quite liked it. I think that for me the problem is the pace. It's just, I don't like that pace of music. It's like not really danceable but it's not slow and so it falls into this weird tempo. But what I love about Ace Wilder, and she grew up in Florida, so she her English is like way better than most people's, and Swedes already speak good English, but she's very clever with her lyrics, and every time I listen to this song, there's something new. Like, she talks about her smart-ass phone, which is obviously a play on smartphone and our addictions to smartphones. She's just very clever in how she constructs this. In any event, she is not my number two. My number two is Franz, If I Were Sorry. If I were sorry, I'd take We touched on this many times in our videos, but this is the kind of foil to all the technical perfection, spectacular Melfest staging. This is simple. This is Lena in a black dress. This is, you know, Franz in street clothes. It is just so simple, and that's why it works. The vo voice is not the most spectacular, but it fits this song, because it's almost, he's speaking for much of the song rather than singing, and his voice is fantastic. Like, it has this unique timbre and quality, like, it's just so inviting and sweet, and the fact that he's like, what, 17? You want to get behind him and support him, and like, I don't know, I just, I really like this. It made me feel something, like, it's in its simplicity where I really feel the music, and the melody is quite nice. The more you listen to it, the more it gets under your skin, um, and I think it benefited him being in the same semifinal as Molly Sandet, because she was all flashy, smoke, wind machines. 
And he was none of that. And so to me, he stood out even more when he was more memorable than the favorite by doing next to nothing. Like his choreography is appalling. It's non-existent. He kind of walks around it's like, <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's quite bad. And that's what makes it good. And I think he's a huge threat to win this. In fact, my instinct is telling me that he will win this, um, but he's still my number two. Sweden are always known at Eurovision for being big, brash and bold. Every year, even if it's a simple song like Undo, they come with these big giant lines. But when Sweden don't go big, they send Anna Bergendahl. Anna Bergendahl didn't qualify. Anna Bergendahl was quite similar to France. She rode in on a wave of popularity. She's a very simple song. Don't be turning up your nose at her. She's a very simple song. And she was very popular in Sweden. She won the Televote, I think, in Melfest that year. Mm -hmm. And France could be the same thing. And will Europe get it? I think they will. I mean, if you look at Anna and France, apart from, yeah, that the, that the staging is simple, what else is the same? I, I, sorry, I There's can't see it There's nothing to at both all. songs. Well, there is. France is really good. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I think Europe will get it to your point about Justin Bieber, Ed Sheeran mating and giving birth to Franz. Like, <laughs> he's riding a contemporary trendy wave, whereas Anna Bergendahl, she showed up in some Converse and a guitar. I mean, we don't know where that came from. It was not following any trend. Whereas Franz is definitely attached to something mainstream, even if they're portraying him as the outsider. He is riding the wave, y'all. Well. It is finally time to reveal our Melody Festival in 2016, number one, Denise. Yeah, it might not be such a big surprise. Um, and uh, in the previous video about our top three, she was on top. I absolutely loved her and we are two shows uh, further and she is still on top. It is Victoria. Same. absolutely amazing. Uh, when I heard the snippet, I was blown away by it. It was so good. She's having such an amazing voice and the song itself, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know. And I do like the staging, even though I think it doesn't really fit the song or something, but it's still really good. And seeing her on stage and like I said, that voice, it's so good. And life, it is even better. I really like her hair. And I especially like that part when she's standing there and it's like, dear old mama, I got news for you. And that part is so good. She's so confident um, over there. And I can't believe it because she is still really young and she's there for the first time. But especially that part, it shows that she's a professional and she will be a big star. And I really hope that she will win because she's... I mean, Melfest, everyone is good, but she's even way too good for Melfest because she is on top of everyone. My number one <laughs> is also Victoria with yes. Save Me. Save Me, I can't get enough of you. Save Me, I can't tell you I'll be blue. Save Me. And she's a long way ahead of the pack, in my estimation. She's got everything, her staging. I'd say herself and Ace Wilder have the best staging of the year at Melfest. But the thing that sets her apart from Ace is that her voice is just sublime. Because Ace, has, she's a great singer, but occasionally her voice can be a bit ropey. And it's a, she's a pop singer. Whereas um, Victoria can just belt it out. And like Denise showed us so wonderfully in her example, she just is sassy at the same time. And then the staging, just the dress. And it's different. I know we've seen projects projection dresses so much at Eurovision but she brings a different twist to it and then even it was nearly like a premonition that the woman they put on the sample Eurovision stage had the big frizzy blonde hair too and it has to be Victoria the two things that I would probably change is maybe they could cut back on the W branding everywhere I think that's a bit tacky she can mm. have it when she has her world arena tour and have the big W's everywhere but for Eurovision and Memphis I think it's tacky <laughs> And maybe put a bit more going on in stage. Occasionally she looks empty, maybe whether it's more lights or dancers or backing singers or whatever. But yeah, she's going to win. But maybe not. I hope she's going to win. And I would hope that the juries get behind her because we've seen before that Franz, maybe you could call him a fad. And in mm. the past, Yohio 
could be called a fad and he swept the televote but then the jury discovered him so I think yeah. maybe that might happen this year her song is the most radio friendly you could hear this right now being looped all over the place it appeals to different generations young people old people people who like country music people who don't because this is pop it's like pop music ultimately with a country tinge i mean it, this is avicii's people right this reminds me of wake me up in a strange way in that not the melody or anything but that it's kind of got a country twang and yet it's so poppy and by the way victoria is my number one as well <laughs> This is one of the rare instances where we all agree, but it's interesting because we all agreed with our top eight that she was number one, and here she is again number one, you know, after we've heard all 28 songs, which to me suggests that she cuts across demographics for different nationalities, different ages, different, she covers everyone. In any event, she's got the most amazing voice. Like, it's like an angel, but a powerful angel. It's like this angel can belt it out. She does it effortlessly. She doesn't look like she's straining at all. We saw her at rehearsals in Malmo, and every single time she just hit it. There was no drama, no strain. She did her thing, stood in place. She does not miss a note. And I think visually, they managed, whenever you think the song might get boring, they change something. So like in the bridge, everything goes yellow. There's the massive star. It's been thought through in a very careful and clever way. Melfest obviously takes down the clips of all the songs after the semifinals. I have been searching for this clip every single day. I'm not kidding you, literally every single day. And then when it was finally released, I was watching it every single day. And I don't get bored because you always find something new to look at, new to admire. And if it's like that for me over the course of, I don't know, five weeks, four weeks, what's it going to be like for someone, you know, over the course of an evening? They're going to be thinking about it the whole time. Like, ooh, that's the act. That's the act. This is the total package. Franz may be riding, you know, a burst in popularity. Molly Sandan may have... I don't know, some fog. This has everything. It blows my mind. It is the most memorable act. It's the best song. And ultimately, this is a song contest. She deserves to win. Yes. I think she'd do the best at Eurovision as well. Yeah. Because, like, the stage is clearly going to be... They're testing the technological things they want to use at Eurovision at this Melfest. So she is ready. She's packaged. They can send her straight to Eurovision. And she could do very, very well. Do you think Victoria could win Eurovision? Um, based on the song, I think she can, absolutely. But I think that if you look at the fans, I think no one wants to go to Sweden again. So I don't know if people will vote for her just because it's Sweden and it might sound really weird. Um, and I'm glad that there are also a lot of people who will watch it for the first time. So they don't care about which country will win. But purely based on the fans, I. I think they will like it, but not, yeah, read it first or something, or I might talk really weird right now, but... <laughs> I think it's definitely good enough to get Sweden another place in the top five. I don't know if it would win. Um, I think we'd have to see what the rest of the songs are like, but I think it could do something similar to Eric Sade and Popular or Stan and Nielsen and Undo and come very close to winning and be in contention right until the very end but then just slip away. For me, this would be one of the more radio-friendly songs. At the moment, we have a lot of random genres that don't necessarily work for the radio. For instance, Armenia, great song, but it's not really radio-friendly. It's very avant-garde. Um, Ukraine. Zoe, Ukraine, yeah. what is it? What station would you put that on? Whereas with Victoria, it's just, it clicks and it's a pop song. And you know, Eurovision juries these days are looking for radio friendly pop song. I think she would slay the pack. I think she would have a very strong chance at winning. I'm gonna break it down. Victoria goes to Eurovision, Victoria wins. This is amazing. It cuts across borders. I've not had a drink. I am just high on the excitement that is Victoria. Sweden, please send her. Let's go back to Malmö or wherever the city you want to take us to. If Victoria is there, I am there. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Who should win Melody Festival in 2016 and who has the best shot at bringing Eurovision back to Sweden? You can let us know here on Weebly Blogs. Make sure to give it a like. And apart from voting for Victoria, also make sure to subscribe. Absolutely. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. Talk, talk, talk.